Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Freebeat, where I post new music-related content every single day, so if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, let's get started. So you guys know I've recently been working on expanding my synthesizer collection. I've got five pocket operators, I've got a Korg Monotron delay, I've got a Korg NTS-1. Then I decided to get myself my first ever analog synth, so I picked up a Volca Keys. And then I decided that I was ready to actually dive like headfirst into uh, subtractive synthesis on an analog model, so I picked up a Behringer Model D. And I've been really happy with all of this gear. However, there's been kind of this hole that I've felt and uh, I've kind of been looking for a, an everything synthesizer, I guess you could say. Something that can fill all the rest of the gaps and uh, kind of always have room to grow. You know, the, uh, the Model D is always going to sound like a mini Moog. The analog keys is pretty limited in what it can sound like. And of course, the pocket operators are, uh, you know, for the most part, pretty limited in what they can sound like. The Monotron and the NTS-1 are both awesome, but again, quite limited. So I kept coming back to this guy. This is too big to fit on camera, but this is my Alesis Micron. This was my first actual synthesizer. I've had this since 2009. And this is a, a digital synth that kind of could do it all. Uh, the, the, the depth of this thing was absolutely ridiculous. It had, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of presets, and you could do pattern setups and all kinds of crazy stuff. The only problem was that it just had this tiny little screen, three encoders, and two sliders, and that was it. That was how you programmed everything. So, you know, there, I think there were there's something like 95 different parameter pages and you'd have to turn through each one with this little knob and, and click and it's just a huge pain to program. So my mind turned to a digital synthesizer. What could I get that would kind of fill this gap and be the last piece of, the last big piece of gear that I would get for a while. And uh, I made up my mind and it just arrived and I'm excited to unbox it with you guys. This is going to be uh, my unboxing and first impressions of the Arturia Micro Freak. Now, really quick before we dive in, um, Arturia did not send this to me. This is not a sponsored video in any way. I purchased this with my own money, and uh, thus all of the opinions expressed in this video will be my own. So let's go ahead, open this up, and uh, see what's inside. I have not opened this yet, and it kind of, kind of bugs me that there's no seal. Oops, it's upside down. But it does look like everything's in there, so... Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, my mic cable and headphone cables are in a frame, but... Let me pull this out of here. This is a real real professional video here. Well, that's very light. Wow. There's my instruction manual. And this is probably power supply. Power supply, pair of MIDI adapters, looks like. Cool. So... Yeah, everything is in there. That is that is good. I was a little concerned when I first saw the box. Wow, this thing is tiny. I did not think it was going to be this small. All right, let's go ahead and open this thing up. Wow, that's very small. Interesting. The keyboard I've was something I've been really looking forward to. It feels feels pretty good actually yeah well wow. yeah I like that quite a bit all right so let's see here we've got a whole bunch of knobs here those are very clicky that's nice endless encoders for your oscillator controls let's go ahead and ah, we'll wait to peel that off we'll wait yeah uh, let's go ahead and get it plugged in and see what it sounds like all right, so on the back, we've got a quarter inch output. We've got a headphone output. That's what I'm connected to into my interface. And it looks like we've got CV gate and pressure out. We've got a clock in and out or sync in and out. So that'll work with uh, pocket operators or the Volcas or anything else that uses a standard uh, sync. And then we've got MIDI in and out. And to use that, you'll use this little eighth inch to uh, standard five pin MIDI adapter. And then USB out for uh, I believe MIDI as well as power so that's pretty cool so we've got it plugged in here let's go ahead and uh, flip the switch in the back let's uh, let this thing boot up and see how it sounds whoa this 
one's called Disrespectful. Very interesting. I'm not, I'm not used to the, uh, to the keyboard at all, obviously. Let's try another preset. How about Punisher? So with the Micro Freak, uh, the keyboard, or the key bed, I should say, uh, is very touch sensitive and you can actually use it as a modulation source. So the more of your finger that's on the key, you can, you, you can use that to modulate parameters uh, via the patch bay up here. Which is like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. That one's called Trance. This one is Ether. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. This is Pitch Bend right here. And the screen actually shows how I'm bending the pitch. Man, so this has a lot you can do with it. Uh, this isn't going to be like a walkthrough or anything like that. I just wanted to uh, catch my first impressions on camera. That's crazy. So right there, I'm actually making that bass line with my finger. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm just cycling through some presets right now. That's a lot of fun. Let's, uh... Oh, that's interesting. Mess with the uh, filter here. So it has an analog filter, digital oscillator, analog filter, and then two envelopes, um, an LFO. One of the envelopes can actually be used as an LFO. And the oscillator has, I believe, 15 now different wave types, or oscillator types. Very cool. And you can actually see on the screen, like there's my cutoff, there's the resonance. And the screen looks really nice, actually. I was not expecting it for how small it is to be so detailed. This is awesome. And on top of all that, it also has an arpeggiator and a sequencer and this crazy patch bay up top, which uh, has five different mod sources, seven different uh, mod destinations, um, and three of those are assignable, so you can make them whatever you want. Very cool. Yeah. Wow. It's got this weird speech engine thing too. And they actually just launched a vocoder for this too. So uh, yeah, you can plug in like a gooseneck mic or any headset mic to the uh, headphone jack and it'll uh, work as a vocoder.
Now, to me, this sounds really nice, actually. <laughs> you can see the amount of pressure, or the, the amount of my finger I put on there, <laughs> affects that, like, pitch bend. Very cool. So uh, another reason I wanted this synth was I wanted a new, uh, you know, a new instrument to use for the upcoming Halloween show, and I wanted something that was a little bit different and weird, and uh, well, with the name Micro Freak, it just fit right in. And if you haven't heard of the Halloween show yet, uh, basically on October 30th, I'm going to be throwing a live stream concert right here on the channel. Uh, day before Halloween, it's going to be a Halloween-themed concert. Uh, hopefully it's going to be about an hour long-ish. And uh, I'm just going to be live streaming uh, from a, a makeshift stage that we're making. And it's going to be uh, a pretty cool show. It's, it's really different, really unique. Uh, kind of some, some campy, cheesy horror in there as well. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully just uh, you know, a good time for everybody to come hang out for an hour or so. Uh, yeah, that's October 30th. I also have a live show uh, this month, September, on the 25th, which is a Friday. 30th October is a Friday as well, by the way. But yeah, Friday, September 25th, I'm going to be playing the drums along to my OPZ album uh, called In Over My Head, live here on the channel. That's at 7 p.m. Friday, September 25th. And then the Halloween show is October 30th. Let's play with a few more of these uh, presets here. <laughs> I like that one a lot. Man, I don't know if you guys can see what's lit up on the patch bay, but there are some really, really complicated uh, routing and modulation uh, patches on here. Oh, I somehow just uh, turned on something. I didn't mean to. What do I do? Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. Here's like a, a nice brass patch. Very cool. So uh, yeah, this video wasn't you know meant to show off the synth or anything. I just wanted to play through a few presets and just, like I said, get my initial thoughts on camera. Uh, tomorrow, I think we'll be back and looking at some of this in a little more a little more detail. But I am very very excited to uh, get to work with this thing. Awesome synthesizer. Uh, I've I've done a lot of research on it. There's a ton of amazing videos out there. Uh, mine's not, of course, going to be the most knowledgeable, but hopefully it'll be one of the most fun. So hopefully you guys are excited for that. If you enjoyed this video and this unboxing, if you're excited for what's next to come with the Micro Freak, go ahead and leave a like on the video. If not, you can leave a dislike. That's okay too. Doesn't hurt my feelings. Just makes me try that much harder next time. Either way, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. We're on the climb to 1,500 subscribers right now. We're at 1,448. We are getting there, guys. So you are all crushing it. I'm very thankful. For each and every one of you, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.